Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So what are the two most interesting technologies I perceive for 2020? At least from my perspective. Number one, the crazy advanced hosting and serving server options that you have out there, like hosting options where you can have an auto, automatically sharded and scaled database for you. We used to have to engineer this. We used to have to build this and plan this. It was a huge amount of work. Now, you just, boom, you throw up your database and they take care of that. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Another interesting feature is the automatic load balancing. You just set up nodes, which are virtualized servers, one node for your, uh, your load balancer and then other nodes for instances of each of your, of your applications. So you can have a node, a virtualized server that you buy, it could cost you whatever, 20 bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, you know? And then you can have multiples of your app, each with their own node, and they will take care of the round robin and of uh, the distribution of the load of the requests as they come in. And then on the back end, you can have a sharded, auto sharded, auto scaled database that takes care of all that for you. It'll expand and grow and add resources as, as the application demands. This is crazy. This is crazy. This was something we used to have to plan in. Uh, our application development in the past, they've taken that out of the equation, which is amazing, which means that scaling and uh, growing your SaaS as your demand requires is just quite trivial, quite trivial. So I'm super happy about that. It's unbelievable. And it's just scratching the surface, auto backups, auto restores, it's that, all this kind of stuff that required a lot of work and a lot of effort. Now it's like, it's just there. You know, and it's not expensive. It's unbelievable. Another thing I would look at is Flutter. I've talked about Flutter in the past. When I first saw Flutter, I took a quick look at it and my nerd eye said, you know what? Pay attention to Flutter. That's an important technology potentially. And apparently it's really starting to, uh, you know, become more and more important. Apparently its capability is pretty powerful. Uh, I haven't used it yet. And something I'm going to consider actually for uh, maybe one, if not two projects uh, in 2020. It's, uh, it's quite interesting. It goes with the trend where I think that native mobile development is going to diminish over time because you got solutions like Flutter, you got PWA. It just, these technologies are becoming better and better and better, more and more mature. So very cool, very cool. Beyond that, it doesn't diminish what I'm, my two technology cho choices here doesn't diminish other things necessarily. It's just something from my perspective and in my work with Studio Web uh, it shows me that, uh, that that's, there's some interesting things there. Those are two things I look at. In general, though, I think for 2020, I think web tech is going to continue to become more and more prominent, although I think overall it's probably the most prominent technology that you could look into. What does that mean in a practical sense? Many more jobs, many more jobs, many more jobs, because web tech is used in all these different places. Microsoft, for instance, as I mentioned in a blog, they've made Outlook a PWA. So as long as you're using that the Chromium engine, which is Chrome browser and the new Edge browser, you can just, boom, Outlook is there. And what that tells you is that they're probably going to port the rest of their office suite to PWA, right? And this is a huge move because if you understood Microsoft in the past, they were very reluctant about web technologies and 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 and. and they were very protect, protective of Windows. So everything was, th they were pushing thick client Windows, so you wanted to use Windows. The new direction Microsoft has taken, and it's one of the reasons why I'm very bullish on Microsoft overall. Bullish means very positive. One of the reasons so positive Microsoft is that they're embracing open technology, openness, PWA and uh, web stack, uh, their technology, they want their technology to work across all platforms and devices. Again, uh, the web stack is going to really facilitate that whole uh, process. So I would be looking at that. That's why I don't have a course on Android development or an iOS development with Swift. Not that there's anything wrong with these languages uh, and these native platforms, not at all. And there's still going to be use for them. But I think for the greatest opportunity 
whether you want to get a job, you want to freelance, especially freelancing. Forget about freelancing mobile, native mobile. Freelancing is going to be all about web stack because you can do you can do mobile, you can do web, you can do all kinds of different things. Um, yeah. So when I'm looking at this whole thing, it's uh, you know I'm always considering the job opportunities. And yes, native mobile, I think, is going to diminish because of cost and because of the fact that, it's, as I said, the hardware is getting, as I said many times before, the hardware is getting much better. And the uh, non-native solutions like Flutter and PWA, et cetera, they're just getting much better as well. So, you know, when you, those two things, the gap between, and the performance gap and the functionality gap between native mobile versus uh, non-native mobile development is a and then you get the whole web stack in, in of itself. As I mentioned in previous law, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a co-founder of a uh, of a pretty good, um, a pretty successful so far um, startup a startup that has raised many millions of dollars. And uh, he's talking. We were talking about the resilience of the web stack, how capable it is, and. And I look back from the 90s. I've been doing this since the 90s. I'm just surprised, in all honesty, I'm surprised that it's so resilient. On the other hand, I'm not surprised because one of the things I've noticed over the years is that any technology that's open and cross-platform tends to survive and grow. Anything that's closed and uh, not cross-platform tends to diminish over time. It's just the nature of the game. At the end of the day, remember when you're writing software, you're writing code, these are business applications, which means the quicker, the cheaper, the quicker you can get something done, the, the cheaper you can get something done, the easier it is to maintain. It's all about cost savings and time savings. That's the primary goal of business, right? That's why everything we have, you know, today, computers are much cheaper than they were 10 years ago relative to the power that you get, which is a good thing. And this is the nature of business. Business is always looking to cut costs, improve efficiencies, improve qualities. If you can get all three at the same time, same time fantastic. So that's the process. So that's why the web, tech, the web stack is, is, uh, is going to be uh, very big in 2020. It's not going anywhere. anywhere. It's going to continue to grow. But again, the two technologies that really freak me out as a nerd is advanced hosting solution, which means that startups, freelancers can, can uh, get out more sophisticated, more scalable, uh, stable applications, more enterprise capable apps, if you will, for much less effort and cost, which is amazing. And uh, of course, Flutter, which is, uh, again, looking at it from the outside, hearing the buzz, checking out the initial technology, initially checking out the technology when it first came out. I like Flutter in 2020. I think it's gonna get more buzz. I don't know if it's gonna explode, but it's hard to say. Like for instance, if a couple years ago when I picked Vue, when it came to front end JavaScript frameworks, there was Vue, React, and Angular. And those are the big ones. And I said, no, I think Vue is gonna be the one to look at. Because I, I looked at it, again, for using my ancient nerd eyes. I said, you know what? Vue's got a nice balance there, and I think that people are going to really appreciate that. And sure enough, Vue is growing. Vue is growing. Uh, Angular and React are a lot, of, a lot more complexity there relative to Vue, and Vue gets the job done. I'm walking the talk because for Studio Web 5, we're implementing Vue. We're, implement, we're implementing Vue. I chose Vue. All right, I hope this is useful and uh, enjoy, I don't know, it's the afternoon for me, so enjoy whatever time of day it is for you. Bye-bye.